Hello, hello, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. Super happy that you're here, super honored that you're taking even a little time out of your day to chat with me or actually to listen to me. But you can chat too. I would love to hear from you. If you are uh, interested in learning more about ethical innovation or if you've got opinions and ideas, things that you want me to explore, things you'd like me to know about, drop me a line. I'm at Isolde T on just about everywhere. So today I want to talk to you about something that is a continuation of what I started talking about last Compassion Wednesday. And that was about building up your powers of observation in order to uh, be able to innovate better. Because in order to innovate, you need to know that some that there's a problem to be solved. And how do you figure out that there's a problem to be solved? You have to observe the situation, whatever the, th- the situation is that you might want to do something about, you have to have those observation skills built up enough in order to observe that something might be wrong and that you want to do something about it, that you want to innovate and figure out a solution. So that's part of it. But the other part of it, of course, is that once you know something, you can't unknow it. Ah, uh, there are cars and they are honking. It is that time of year where people are traveling a lot. And so there are taxi cabs and, and lifts and whatever, and they all honk for one another. So there we go. This is life in New York City. <laughs> so so let me, let me really, let's explore this notion of unknowing. Can you ever forget, truly forget something you observed and took in? You can unless it's traumatic, right? We take things into short-term memory all the time and forget. Where did I put my keys? Where did I remember to buy the oat milk? Whatever whatever it is that I was trying to do, sometimes unless I write it down, it's just not going to it's not going to happen. I'm not going to have it in my head, my consciousness at the moment. But there are some things, many things that once you know about them, you cannot unknow about them. Once you know that the problem exists, there is no way for you to behave in the world as if that problem doesn't exist. And that's a big deal. It's a big deal for our psyches. It's a big deal for our minds. And it's a big deal for our physical selves, I think, because if you are in a situation where you're faced with somebody else's traumatic experience, uh, what will you do? How will you react? Do you know? Have you thought about it? I remember many moons ago, there was, uh, I was walking with a friend to the farmer's market back when I lived in Washington, D.C. And as we walked, and this is going to be uh, potentially disturbing on uh, a couple of levels, so I'm going to give you warning if you have issues uh, and triggers around physical abuse, please note that this is going, I'm going to be talking about it right now. So as we were walking to the farmer's market, kitty corner across the street, I saw uh, a man beating a woman. Uh, He was hitting her and he had knocked her down onto a set of stone steps on T street Northwest, if that helps. And uh, T and 16th, in fact, and he, or maybe it was T and 18th. I don't remember now. And he, uh, was, was hitting her and kicking her. And I said, ah, no. And thought I'm going to stop this because for me, physical abuse of any kind towards any being, whether it's a bipedal human or a quadruped or a fish or a bird, it doesn't matter. Uh, Whatever, whatever the critter, whatever the being, abuse of that kind is not something that I can, that I will handle well. And will will need to stop because of my own history of being abused as a child. That is a trigger for me. And I know that. So when I observe it, I have to get involved. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm going to get involved and I'm going to stop it. That's, that's how I operate. So uh, as soon as I saw it, we marched across the street and we 
we intervened. My friend and I intervened. We got him to stop hitting her. The police got called. They came, and we ended up having to go to court and be and be uh, witnesses to the crime. And uh, again, once once you know that, you can't unknow it. You we couldn't unknow it. We couldn't not see what was happening. It was right there in front of us. And uh, there is no way to do anything for me anyway, but to get involved, to, to intervene and to make sure that it stops. Because again, once you observe it, because observation is tough, you, you, may, uh, you may choose not to observe, you may choose not to get involved. And I can't and won't judge anybody for what they do or don't do in those kinds of situations, especially nowadays with concealed carry and things could get very hazardous very quickly. But in that moment, I knew that I had to get involved and I had to stop him. And it's actually one of the reasons that I know that I can't do uh, the, the, the bearing witness in uh, trucks full of pigs or cows that are bound for slaughter. I've thought about being one of those people who goes and who gives the pigs just even a little bit of of love stroking on on the snout or something and I I would love to have the courage to do what those people do honestly because it takes something more than I can do uh, to go to the trucks as they are bound for slaughter or they are about to uh, go into the slaughterhouse and to to do something for these wonderful animals that isn't the pain and horror that their lives have been uh, is is the it's absolutely the right thing and i know for myself i i just don't know that i have the ability i don't know that i have the courage uh to do that i and 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 it's not uh it's not courage it's courage to to bear witness it's it takes such such courage, such sense of self to know that you can do this and be there for these animals that are about to be murdered, uh, that I, I, I honor every single person who has ever, ever done this. I've done it with humans. I have uh, done volunteer work with Safe House going in and, and helping uh, get usually women and children who have, who are in abusive, acutely abusive situations get to safety and I've done counseling at rape crisis centers and things like that. And uh, for some reason, and and I think it's because the animals are helpless, right? There is no way to intervene on their behalf to save their lives in that moment. And maybe that's why I have such a problem with it, because that feeling of helplessness is something that is pervasive in those moments. And it's something that's very hard for me as, as an individual, as Isolde, to deal with. The feeling, you know, if I were the wealthiest woman on the planet, I would buy all of them up. I would just buy all of the pigs and all of the cows and turn everything into sanctuaries and let them be alive and, and living their best lives for far longer than they would otherwise live because they get taken to slaughter uh, so early. So if I were queen, that is what would happen. But I am not queen, and so I I know that I cannot unknow that. I have seen, I have stopped and made friends at the outskirts of farms with cows that have the tags on their ears, which means they are about to go to slaughter, and they weren't in the truck. It wasn't imminent, so it was a little bit easier for me, but it's something for us all to think about. What can you handle? What can you handle? Because once you know it, once you know that this pig, this cow, this chicken, this turkey is bound to be murdered in minutes, maybe hours, and their, the rest of their lives will be sheer terror because it's not a pretty thing. It's not a calm thing. Uh, once you know that, you can't unknow it. And we all have to make peace with knowing what we know and knowing what we don't know and what we can handle. And some people, some saints are much better able to handle it uh, than I can. I, I know this. I know that I can't handle it. At least not right now. I'm, I'm working my way up to it. But it is, um, along with those powers of observation that I was talking about last time, it is crucial for us to understand what's going on on the planet, what's going on potentially 
a couple of miles down the road from you and what you want to know about it and what you don't want to know about it, what you're going to turn a blind eye to and what you're not going to turn a blind eye to, what will make you, and I don't mean you personally, I mean the general you, what will make you stand up and go, no, this I will not allow. Uh, because that's part of what we all have to do for ourselves. And we have to figure it out. And for me, going vegan was one of those things, right? That I, that's a, that's, to me, that's a very tiny thing that I do because being vegan has a lot of repercussions, right? There's a lot of things that happen uh, uh, atmospherically, environmentally, if you remove yourself from, from the process of eating dead animals. So that's part of it. But there's, there's more. There's more to think about uh, because for me, it's easy now. It's easy being vegan. I have no problem with it at all. So that's what I mean by it's easy. For, for many people, it's not easy, and it's a choice they make, and they, they have to work at it really hard. For me, I live in, in, in a society where, oh my goodness, everything I want is available to me. So I get that for some people it would be a lot harder. But those are the choices that I'm making because I know for me I can live and breathe much more easily if I don't have to worry about the suffering my actions are causing to other sentient beings. So I'm encouraging you and inviting you to think about what do you know, what do you want to know, and how will you deal with the fact that you can't unknow it? Once you know about it, you cannot unknow it. You cannot truly forget about something if it's gotten into that midterm or long-term memory. So I hope that you've gotten something out of this episode of the Innovative Mindset Podcast because this notion of knowing and being aware is something that, that we all can benefit from and it will help you think more creatively, be more observant, be more present and stay in that what can I do to help mindset because ultimately being of service in that way is the best thing we can do. All righty. I am Isolde Trachtenberg for the Innovative Mindset Podcast, reminding you that ethical innovation is all about solving problems creatively because you're trying to do the right thing and reminding you also to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2021. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, remember to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you.